Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2009 comedy adventure film Land of the Lost. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. In the opening scene of the movie, we witness a man in a spacesuit lost in a dark, dank, swampy terrain. He begins to panic and runs through the water and the trees that surround him. He stumbles and falls over with a splash. As he gets up, we see a dinosaur approaching him in the reflection of his visor. In the next scene, we see a TV talk show on which paleontologist Rick Marshall is being interviewed by the host Matt Lauer. He is attempting to promote his new book. In this, he proclaims it is possible for mankind to hop across dimensions into other worlds, worlds in which all of the timelines and ours are combined. The host is naturally cynical. He then further angers the scientist by refusing to allow him to smoke a pipe on set. As a result, Marshall walks off but swiftly returns to assault Lauer. Next, we cut to an apparent lecture in a darkened room in which Marshall is expounding his theory once again. However, as he turns on the lights, we find it is simply a classroom. His students begin to mock him and he dismisses them. But at this point, a young woman, Holly Cantrell, enters the room. She is from the UK, but has tracked him down because she truly believes in his theories. He is now less certain, but she presents him with a fossil that is millions of years old and includes an imprint of his lighter. Later, back in his apartment, Marshall has passed out in a food coma. Holly arrives to find him surrounded with empty wrappers from the various junk foods he has been gorging on. It is then that she spots his tachyon amplifier, the device he believes can help transport them to a different dimension. She turns it on to find, when up and running, it admits the sound of a show tune song. Having persuaded Marshall to test the amplifier with her, we find the two of them out in the desert. They pull over and into a shop where they meet its owner, Will Stanton. He attempts to sell them various fireworks as well as various other pieces of tat, but they politely refuse. Instead, they ask him to show them a cave. Inside the cave, Stanton is paddling a dinghy along a stream. He is animated and attempts to engage them with his dramatic tales and props. They, however, are more interested in monitoring the levels of tachyon energy, much to his annoyance. As the signals pick up, the scientist cranks up his machine. An apparent earthquake is initiated, which Marshall describes as the greatest ever known. The stream becomes a gushing torrent, and the dinghy is carried along with it in increasing rapidity, with the amplifier being lost en route. It quickly carries its three occupants over the edge of a sheer drop, and we see them plunging into an abyss. They awaken in a sprawling sandy desert with a multitude of other planets and moons visible in the sky. Confirming Marshall's theory about time, they spot a Viking ship with a plane that has crashed into it. The scientist begins to film a video blog of their trip, but is interrupted by a sound. The three of them hasten to the top of a dune, from which they spot two ape-like creatures trying to execute another. Stanton, however, interrupts them by showing them his lighter. Behind an ancient monument, the would-be victim of the execution, Chaka, is hiding. The three adventurers lure him out and attempt to befriend him. Holly is able to communicate with him and elicits his name. Marshall aggravates him, though, and as he runs off, attempts to chase him. The pursuit doesn't last long, as the group plunge through a hole in the desert and into a cave. Inside the cave, Holly is able to convey to Chaka that Marshall is a great chief. This seems to convince and calm their hairy companion. The piece is quickly interrupted when they are all suddenly strung up in the air by a number of vines. They are in a feeding station. As they attempt to swing across the cave to free themselves, they are confronted by a T-Rex. In the subsequent attack, the vines are broken and the group escapes. They run along a path with the dinosaur on their tails. Once they cross a narrow bridge, they think they've lost it. Marshall begins to mock its intelligence, suggesting its brain is only about the size of a walnut, but the T-Rex leaps over the gap and continues its hunt. Quickly, they take refuge in another cave with a narrower entrance. Unable to get in, the predator abandons its prey, but only after covering them in its saliva. Within the cave, the group finds the skeletal remains of its previous human occupants. Before bedding down for the night, they question whether Chaka should be allowed to remain, with Marshall against the idea. Holly then questions the Pakuni as to why he was about to be killed. He claims it was a result of a plot to overthrow him, and they agree to let him stay. The next day, the group are desperate to eat. Marshall is busy filming a video log about how he would best cook and serve Chaka. Chaka then returns with armfuls of a large fruit. Marshall cracks one open to find it full of insects, which Chaka begins to eat. He then asks if they are now friends. Suddenly, the scientist begins to sense a message being transmitted directly into his brain. He runs off in the direction of his impulse, with his friends following him. They arrive at an ancient, seemingly abandoned temple. In the middle of it is a giant, vibrating crystal. Stanton and Marshall then place their hands on this and begin to sing. 
they are interrupted by their local companion who attempts to warn them of something in their midst. However, all they hear are the words Chorizo Taco. He was trying to tell them about the Slee Stacks, a group of lizard men who emerge and surround them. Marshall reacts by reflecting the light from Holly's belt buckle onto the eyes of some nearby statues. This opens a triangular-shaped portal in the previously flat crystal. They hop inside, believing they are now safe. Once the door closes, they find themselves on a floating crystal with another of the creatures, although this one is clad in a tunic. He introduces himself as Enoch and expresses his respect for Marshall's work. He warns them of an exile Zarn who wants to take over the Earth. He suggests that this can be prevented with the help of Marshall's amplifier. Enoch claims it is nearby, but he must remain in the pylon to protect his crystals. As they head off to find it, Stanton remarks that they should never trust a man in a tunic. To protect himself from the dinosaurs, Marshall douses himself in their urine and also tries to imbibe some. It doesn't work, though, as they approach an area framed with the Golden Gate Bridge. Here, they encounter many smaller dinosaurs attacking an ice cream cellar and two bigger ones more interested in them. A chase ensues with Marshall their primary target. He tries to escape their attention by posing as a statue and then hiding in a stretch hummer. It doesn't work, though, but when he finds a canister of liquid nitrogen, he has a brainwave. The three use an ancient catapult to propel this into the air and down the throat of the Allosaurus, killing it. It explodes to reveal the amplifier had been inside its stomach. However, before it can be reclaimed, it is snatched and carried away by a pteranodon with the chorus line still playing. Marshall is on the cusp of giving up, but his friends are frustrated by this. After some thought, he returns to their campfire armed with a banjo and begins to sing. As he does so, a mosquito-like bug appears on his shoulder and begins to suck his blood. As it becomes bigger and bigger, Marshall tires and grays. Within seconds, he collapses onto his back, crushing the now-enormous blood-filled insect. The next day, the friends climb up a volcano to find a nest of pteranodon eggs at the top, barring their route to the amplifier. With Stanton and Chaka reluctant to help, Marshall picks his way between the eggs to retrieve the vital piece of equipment. This he does, but as he picks it up, the music dies and the eggs begin to hatch. Holly, however, suggests the music was a lullaby. Marshall begins to sing with support from the others, Chaka included, and makes his way back unimpeded. Mission accomplished, a celebration ensues. The group pitch up at an abandoned motel and begin to party around its pool. Chaka then offers them a drink from a nearby fruit tree. As the three gentlemen party, Holly heads off to explore the surrounding area with the amplifier. They are approached by a giant crab, which is suddenly sucked into the earth. It is expelled equally quickly in pieces and fully cooked. Partiers reveal their feelings for one another as they chomp on the giant crab claws. In a nearby glade full of crystals, Holly encounters Zarn. He warns her that it is actually Enoch that they should fear, because it is he who plans to lead an army of Sleestack to seize the earth. Before he can finish speaking, his body is struck down by a beam of light from Enoch and Holly is grabbed by one of his lizard-like followers. Realizing Holly had been taken, the three others set off to find her. Inside a cave, Stanton and Marshall believe they are watching two of the lizards about to get it on. However, they are actually shedding their skins. The men subsequently don these and make their way to Holly's execution, where they reveal their true selves. Here, they are sentenced to death for attempting to help Enoch, who it transpires, was banished and forced to wear the tunic as a punishment. A struggle unfolds, during which Marshall is able to rescue Holly from a cage above a fiery pit. Having escorted her to relative safety, she kisses the scientist passionately. They are interrupted by Enoch, who uses his powers to turn the attention of the T-Rex onto Marshall once again. He sends Holly away by using some harsh words. With Stanton fearful and unwilling to help, he then grabs a stick and uses it to pole vault himself towards the dinosaur and, somewhat unfeasibly, straight down its throat. As Holly and Stanton also begin an unsuccessful fight back against the Slee Stack, Marshall returns riding the T-Rex. With this on their side, they win the battle, though the others are disturbed to find out exactly how Marshall found his way out of the body of the ancient being. Next, back in the pylon, the friends confront Enoch. A fight breaks out, dislodging a crystal as it does so. As the opening back to Earth appears to be flickering out, Marshall grabs a small crystal from Holly's necklace and uses it to replace the one which was lost. While Marshall and Holly head to the exit, hand in hand, Stanton declares his intention to stay in his new home. In the final sequences of the film, Stanton and his buddy Chaka arrive at Chaka's settlement to a rapturous reception. Stanton is quickly surrounded by a group of the females who prod and probe him with intrigue. Contrary to what Chaka had previously stated, they are stunning and also scantily clad. Thus, the human is happy with his decision. Meanwhile, back in the real world, Marshall reveals his passion for Holly in the cave. 
They also let Stanton's colleague know he has decided to stay. Finally, the scientist returns to the same TV show once again to revel in his success, give the host a dinosaur egg, and unveil his new book. It is titled, Matt Lauer Can Suck It. This time, it is the host who loses his rag and attempts to wrestle with his mocking guest. As the credits roll, we are treated to a shot of the abandoned dinosaur egg shaking and ready to hatch. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.